So I have these images, and these images are up in Docker Hub. Let's see how I built them. So I'm going to go to PHP app, in my build directory here, and this is everything I use along with some explanation of how I built these images. So let's go to Nginx first. Now first I'll just say that an image for Docker is something uh, from which you use to create a container. In other words, if I do Docker images, I have a bunch of images here, and I can use any of these images to start a new container. So I have the Ubuntu 16.04 one here. When I do Docker run Ubuntu 16.04 and run the bash command, I'll do IT so to make it interactive so I can uh, put commands into it as well. This starts a new container and it bases it off of an image. So Ubuntu 16.04, right? So I have Ubuntu image in my local computer. It's tagged at 16.04. So oftentimes we want to make an image. So there's a few ways to make a Docker image, but the best, quote unquote best, way is to use a Docker file. And a Docker file does a few things. One, you set yourself as a maintainer. That's kind of boring. It just sets me as the maintainer of this. From is always first on the top of a Docker file. And it's important because it says from what image to base this on. So the way Docker builds new images is that it starts from, a, from an image that already exists. In this case, we're going to use Ubuntu 16.04, and then it runs commands on it. And every time it runs a command, it actually makes a new container, runs that command or multiple commands in that container, and then builds a new image off of it. It's sort of like a git commit. So every time we commit a change to a image, it's creating a new container, running the command, and committing that change from the container into a new image. So it um, is layered in that every time we have a thing here that does something, it's going to make a new container and then add on the changes onto our base image. So we start from Ubuntu 16.04, start a new container, run these commands, build that into an image, and commit those changes into a new image, and run add. This starts a new container. It adds this file. Uh, specifically, in this case, we're adding the default file found here. And then it commits that change and makes a new uh, image out of that. The result of this is a few things. One, we have intermediary containers and images that are left over. They get cleaned up automatically, though, um, but they are there as we build a new Docker image. And two, we end up with a layered system where um, changes, future changes to an image are actually very quick because we don't have to rebuild all of this every time we build an image. So if I build a shipping Docker Nginx image, it'll run all these commands. If I later make a change to this file and add something down here. It will start from the latest committed image, make that change, and commit that. It won't actually have to rerun all of this in its entirety. So it's actually very quick to update base images in Docker. That's why it's so often part of a build process when you're uh, deploying code, because you can build a new Docker image really quick and redeploy it fairly quickly as well. So this Docker file specifically is starting at Ubuntu 16.04, sets me as the maintainer. It installs Nginx. It does some stuff to clean out uh, installation artifacts just to make it as slimlined and small as possible. And then we add daemon off to the Nginx configuration. What that makes Nginx run in the foreground instead of the background, which is required for the most part. We add the default file. This is a relative file path, right? So the default is the file found right here in the same file path as Docker file. The default file here is just configuration for my Nginx application. So it adds that at the Etsy Nginx sites available default location, which is where the default configuration is to begin with. So I'm just kind of overwriting uh, a file that Nginx has. I expose port 80. I'm telling Docker that I want port 80 to be able to be reached from external hosts. In other words, the host machine is going to be able to make requests at port 80 into this container. And then I say the command to run. The command to run is Nginx, which is all I need to run an Nginx. So that's just like typing here Nginx and telling it to start it. I don't have it in my Macintosh. Nginx will be in the container here, and it will run Nginx. So let's head over here. I have this repository. We can head into my build directory. This is the same build directory. Let's go into Nginx. And first, I'll just show you. I have images already, right? So I have Docker images. I have shipping Docker Nginx. It's tagged latest. And I'll make a new image here. So I can do Docker build. The build command is going to use the Docker file it finds here. So what I'm going to do is tag this. So let's go to Docker images again. I have latest. I don't, doesn't look like I have a Docker 1.0 here, but that tag does exist. So if I go to tags here, we see I have a 1.0 and I have a latest, and they're actually both the same thing. We need Docker build dash T. So we're going to call this shipping Docker slash Nginx. I'm going to tag this latest because anytime I build and make a new build, I want that build to be called the latest. 
Now we can do two names here. So I'm going to do shipping docker once again, engine X, and this time it's going to be 1.1. So I've actually incremented a revision here, even though I haven't made a change. I'm going to tag it 1.1, and I'm also going to say to call this latest because it's the latest build. And I do a dot here to tell it to search the current directory for a Docker file, and this is going to build it. Oh, and I see my issue here. I need a second dash T. So dash T for this, and dash T for this name and tag pair, and then the current directory. All right, and this is building it. Now, I already have the Ubuntu 1604 image here locally, so it doesn't have to re-download that. So it's starting from Ubuntu 1604, and it's running all the build steps for these images. All right, that's finished. We can see it's run through the steps here. Expose 80, command nginx, add our file. Up here, did apt-get update, installed nginx. So I can do docker images, and we can see that I have docker nginx 1.1. I have a new shipping docker nginx at latest. Now I can actually push this up to Docker Hub, but first I need to log into it. So you can actually do Docker login. I'm going to log in as shipping docker, paste in my password, login successful. Great. So now I can do Docker push shipping docker nginx at 1.1. So this is going to do all it needs to do to upload that newly tagged at 1.1 container, or I should say the container image. Now once that's done, I can also do the latest, the one tagged latest. And these have to be separate commands, you can't push them up at the same time. But you can also, every time, push up all of the newly tagged um, images that you've created. So shipping docker nginx latest is what I'm doing in this case. Once that's all done, that becomes available on Docker Hub. Now I've pushed these up as a public repository. You can do private repositories also if you pay, or you can actually spin up your own instances of a Docker registry, which is essentially what Docker Hub is. And then you can have a private registry for your Docker images. That's typically what you might do in a production environment if you have your own infrastructure for that. Otherwise, if you'd like to pay Docker, you can create private repositories as well. But this being public and on Docker Hub is why when we go to our Docker Compose file and define this as an image, this is why it works. It's able to find shipping Docker Nginx at the latest with the latest tag from Docker Hub and download it and use it.